Hi, I'm Fletch, and on this week's show, it's about Chryslers. So, if you're into your Mopars, stay right where you are. The Valiant here in Australia always punched above its weight. It was a fantastic car, but it didn't quite earn the acceptance from the Australian buyer, like the Holden or the Falcon did. But having said that, the Chrysler product has etched a footprint. A footprint into the hearts of countless thousands, reflecting this celebration decades later. Welcome to the 2017 Chrysler's On The Murray. Albury in New South Wales, a beautiful city that was established in 1839 and rests on the north side of the Murray River. Laced with its heritage buildings and long, wide streets with leafy canopies, Albury is home to just over 51,000 people. Over the last few years, in excess of 600 Chryslers have journeyed to the Albury Wodonga area to celebrate the Chrysler breed, making Chryslers on the Murray the largest Chrysler show in the Southern Hemisphere. And this organisation from the Albury Wodonga Chrysler Club is from one of the smallest Chrysler clubs in Australia. So basically the beginning for Valiant in Australia was in 1962 when Chrysler Australia assembled the American Plymouth Valiant, marketed as the Valiant by Chrysler. After the first batch of just over 1,000 cars sold quicker than hot scones, by 1963 they had developed a local Aussie version, the AP5 Valiant, with distinctive styling giving the car a separate identity from the US Plymouth and Dodge variants. Through the 1960s, Chrysler expanded the Valiant range with a two-door hardtop, the long wheelbase VIP and the sporty Pacer variants. Now according to my observations, anyone that has ever owned a Mopar has usually been a happy camper. The mighty Valiant powered through to its demise in 1981 with the last of the CM series, possibly the best Valiant ever made. Chrysler in the USA was known for setting benchmarks, first in many avenues, mainly outlandish body styles and paint colours, and of course, not to mention, amazing performance options. Here in Australia, there were some mighty fine runs on the board here too, Chrysler was first to introduce electronic ignition, the first to initiate torsion bar suspension, a hemi head on a six-cylinder engine, and anti-lock front doors, but unfortunately they were also the first one of the big three in Australia to go broke. And although the demise of production happened back in 1981, the upside is that these are the ones that are left. And like all classic vehicles, they have their own interesting stories to tell. Moving through Chrysler on the Murray for 2017. Good morning, Bill. Morning, Fletch. How are you going? Mate, I'm great. This car here, how stunning is it? We're talking a fifth month, 76 build, a VK Valiant. An amazing car, 9,800 original kilometres on this car. Tell us a story. Uh, the car, no one had seen it for 33 years. It was in a neighbour's shed, uh, three kilometres from my place, and I can't believe that I didn't know it was there. It was his father's car. He bought a brand new off Convair uh, Chrysler in uh, Young Street, Norbury, when they were going. He drove it for eight years and clocked up that many kilometres in it. That was it. When he passed away, his wife said, put the car on the shed and put a cover over it. So they did that and left it. I just can't believe this car. It, it's the first one that I've seen like this. And might I say too, they're a very nice shape. I mean, I like the VK. They're a very, a very dressy, they're a fairly plain car, but they've got their own class in their own way, haven't they? Yeah. When you find one this and see how good they look, and, and then with the originality on top of it, I reckon they're just marvellous. 
these cars very popular back in their day. I mean, they were these were the the taxi cabs, your sales reps' cars, um, a, a slight facelift from the prior VJ model as well, which they didn't really do a lot through the Valiant range. They gave them new um, new tail lights, different grille changes. A little bit like Falcons and, and Kingswoods in that respect. Yeah. They they kept that heritage of uh, of the VH shape, VH um, yeah, and yeah. I mean they were rugged. They were a good car, weren't yeah. they? And this one's um, it's fairly well option. It's not the top option one, mm. but uh, the option codes I just can't remember off the top of my head. Mm. But 318 column shift auto, yep. which makes it a six seater. Another option was the laminated windscreen. I think one more option on it was heavy duty suspension, which means uh, it's stiffer torsion bars and uh, sway bar at the front. Keep up the great work, Bill. All right, thanks a lot, Fletch. You're Good on you. Thanks, mate. How cool is this? Three CL Chryslers all lined up in a row, owned by this bloke. How are you, John? Good, Fletch. Yourself? Good, mate, good. This is, uh, this is the first time I've seen this. You're the one owner. They all belong to you, right? That's right, yep, all three. OK, John, let's start with the panel van, mate. Let's start yep. with the Drifter. What's the run down there? Well, uh, pretty much seen it in for sale in Queensland, central Queensland, and um, it all went from there. Won it on eBay and went up and picked it up and just been sitting in the shed for 20 years and it, the way it looked, it had been sitting in the shed for 20 years. Yeah, what, mate, oxygen marks are just about to drop <laughs> the ceiling on that one. I mean, it's original, no bolt unturned. Yeah, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. It's, yeah. uh, it's still got the dents, it's still got the marks. I've yeah. fixed a bit of rust up yeah. under the doors, but um, yeah. I've just lowered it, put my wheels on it and um, yeah. put a chrome bumper on it. It's made it a bit better. Talk about the 70s. I mean, the colour scheme just in itself just gives the whole game away, doesn't it? Well, technically... My era probably shouldn't be involved in drifter panel vans and drifters at all because they just look way out of the, <laughs> you know, nowadays. But uh, i got a thing for them now. I just love the stripe, love the colour. Love but, but it's cool. I mean, you know, cool, you, yeah. you might be a young bloke, but how cool is this guy? I mean, he's, you know, you've got three legendary vehicles yeah. that are the lesser in build quantity, as we've always yeah. said, with Chrysler here in Australia. The ones here in the paddock are, are a percentage of, of what is left. Uh, the winners are the grinners with these cars. Now, John, we look underneath the bonnet. You haven't even cleaned it. I mean, mate, this is just an original car. It looks like it's just been wheeled out of a shed and just driven here. Pretty much, yeah. All I've done is just did the motor fixed the motor up, still a, a matching original motor, yeah. uh, numbered motor, yeah. and um, yeah, pretty much just got it here, towed me Udy. Now, it's a, three, it's a 318 V8, what have you done to it? Uh, it's just standard, just yeah. a whole standard, it's got a little mild cam in it, I've got a holly on it. and uh, I can tell you've done something because of the uh, recent paint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It kind of gives the rest away, you know? Yeah, she's brand new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Righto, John, we move on now to the centre car, we've got a CL Charger. How nice is this? Uh, very nice car, story there. Story about that one. Well, I had the Ute, I had the panel van, then I got the Ute. Now all I needed was the charger. So Bill from Infobase, we said to him, um, we need to we need to get three. And he's like, oh, I think I know where there's one. And we're like, oh yeah, yep. So a couple of weeks later, he rings me up and said, you wouldn't guess what? And I said, what's that? He said they want to sell the charger. And I went, you're joking. And we were about to head to America, me and my missus. And um, sure enough, we got rang him up. Said, mate. Will you take this? He's like, yep. So that was on the truck. We flew to America. I haven't seen it yet. And then I got back from America and I was waiting in the garage, in the carport out the back. So that's sounds, sounds like to me that the <laughs> that the missus uh, can expect changes at any given moment. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at the drop of a hat, which takes us to the last car in the line, yeah. the Ute. Now, I know a little bird told me a bit of a story about the Ute, mate. What's the deal there? All right, well, I was buying a house. Had all the money there for it, and then I thought a better investment to buy the Ute. So I was Be better <laughs> buy the Ute, better investment than a house. Yep. All right, John, carry on. <laughs> yeah. So then I thought yeah, that's a good idea. I only just met me missus at the time. Wasn't really me missus. Yeah. I rang the. So one, so wonder she still is. Yeah. I rang the guy up, and he said it's gonna from WA, and he said it's gonna make it. It's gonna make it. I said, oh, are you sure it's gonna make it across Australia? He said it will. It will. So sure enough, I asked her. I said, do you want to go on a road trip? She's like, where are we going? I said, WA. <laughs> so then we uh, obviously got over there and um, he opened the garage door and I my mouth dropped. I swear to God, I could not fold it for the life of me. And um, we did, we had the best trip, we had the best road trip.
shake the hand, mate. And, uh, nice to meet you, Fletch. You too. Good on, good on your job. Keep up the good work with these cars, mate. Oh, I'll try. I mean, talk about the clever department. How you doing, Costa? Good, Fletch. How are you today? Mate, mate, fantastic. What you have done here, 1977 CL Ute. I mean, it just, it's a knockout car. I mean, we talk about the clever department. The first thing is the extended roof line. You've got the big wheels. And up front, you've got something very unique. Tell us what that is. Well, we got, I uh, thought I'd do something different and put an 8.4 Dodge Viper engine in it. Nice big V10 just to uh, give people a bit of a shock factor and do something, you know, next next level up and, yeah, just step up the game. Like I said too, Costa, I think it's the level of cleverness. I mean, how far do we do we go with our cars here? Uh, very tastefully done. You've even uh, done away with the standard Valiant dashboard and uh, tell us what you've done there. Well, basically, once we started doing all the custom work and we had to do the tunnel, we thought, well, you know, let's just get rid of everything that was original in, in the interior, do a whole complete handmade dash, wrap it all in leather to match the rest of the car, fit all our Dakota digital instruments in it, air conditioning, it's got central locking in it, it's got everything in this car, so yeah. all the creature comforts. Costa, it's a big transmission tunnel. It's huge, it's got a big Dodge Ram four-speed auto in behind it <laughs> just to handle the power because I, I didn't want to go the, down the manual. Um, but mate, it works really well. It's all been, you know, incorporated into the interior real nice, yeah, so yeah. yeah, it fits good. Uh, not a silly question, but it goes hard. It goes very hard. There's lots of torque there, ready to go. It yeah. goes hard yeah. and very nice and tame on the street, easy to drive. Well, absolutely, cost. I mean, we're talking uh, computer management, fuel injection, right. uh, and then when you nail it, it's all there. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the beauty is we ditched the original ECU that came with the engine and we yep. went for a Haltech Elite. Yep. And, you know, we can program a little bit more. We've got a little bit more to play with and allows us to put some future upgrades. So, yep. And it's just a very smooth car. The idea was to be able to get the wife to get in, drive it, yep. which is more than happy. Happy to do yeah. so. And speaking of which, um, you've got your wife Amanda and the whole family here with yeah, you this wife, weekend as well. Wife and kids here to yeah. support. They love the cars. Yeah. Um, she's as much of a rev head as me, which is good. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. It's just nice when you get to that stage of your life, though, where you can appreciate it, and it's about common sense, and you know when and where. But it's about how far to go with this vehicle over and over again with this. I mean, even the placement, uh, the yeah. positioning of the engine in the engine bay with your engine mounts was that much of a drama to sort out? Uh, not really. The bonus was there was a, a wreck Dodge Viper down the road at Panel Beaters, and I thought, can I measure this up, guys? Can you, you know? And did heaps of measurements off that, which was good. Measured on the car, and everything was going to fit. Yeah. So it was actually that was one of the easiest things actually on the car to actually fit in yep. and you know complete in the car. It was good. Good on you, Costa. Well done. Uh, but before I let you go, back yeah. to this dashboard, mate. Talk yeah. about talk about the Costa design. You should uh, you should put a patent on that. Mate, I should, but I don't think you know. Don't think you want to know the cost of what it's cost so far to do a lot of this stuff. It's, yeah. uh, but luckily the wife's on board and she's more than happy to yeah. keep going. But it yeah. makes all the difference in the world when when you have that support. Uh, now, in terms of projects down the track, is there something else on the horizon, or is this going to do you for a while? Fletch, I, I think there is another project because I started building this when I didn't have any kids, and now I've got four, yeah. and they're all fighting who's going for a drive first. Yeah. So we're looking to buy a sedan of some sort, and yeah. You know, probably go one level up again and yeah. do something insane. Yeah. Good on you, mate. Then everyone gets to go for a drive. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Cross on the Murray 2017. Wow. Need we yeah. say more? Thanks, nice. Fletch. Nice. Enjoy the day. Enjoy nice. the weekend. Nice chatting, mate. Well done. Love you, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Time for Warren now. How you doing? Good, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Good. Love your car. Thank now. You. The angle we're going to go here yes. is you've done a clone. Yes. Now, I've got a lot of time for the clone and the replicas, yes. uh, especially when they've been done correctly. And the reason that I have got a lot of time for this is because these are the cars that really receive and take a lot of extra work to get to where they are. That's right. And, and this one has taken a lot of extra work. Well, OK. To me, it looks like a 71 VH. Yeah. Uh, so where are we there? No, it's actually a VJ that's been made into a VH. Right. Yep. And um, it's an interesting way how I came about it because I didn't go to buy a car or to look at it. I went to buy some parts from a guy named Gary down in Albany and he had this car he was going to wreck and it was this ute. 
it's uh, beautiful. Uh, themed an E49. Now, okay, we had the E49 charger. This yes. was possibly the, this could have been the E49 ute that Chrysler Australia never made. That's right. So Gary, when he owned the car, he painted it 15 years ago, the paint is about now. And I bought the car in 2013 and he says, I don't know what to do with the paint. Mm. You know? So I, I, um, I've got a charger as well, so I bought the parts for the charger. I ended up buying everything that he had, mm. including this. And then well, I the thought, only charger I've got is a battery charger. Uh -huh. But I thought, let's make a modern take on an E49. Mm. And instead of putting a supercharged big block or something, let's yep. go to Weber's, yes. four speed, mm -hmm. RT dash, yep. but modernise it. So mm. automatic headlights, rain sensing windscreen wipers, central locking. Yep climate control, air con, rack and pinion steering. Yep. Again, we're back to the level of cleverness, as I like to put it on classic restos. The person that gets a car has a good think about it and goes that extra couple of steps above, and that's what you've done here. Not only have you done it, you've done it nicely. Now, standing here in the flesh next to this, this vehicle, uh, it's flawless. I mean, I look through the paint there. Uh, the magenta paint looks absolutely beautiful, right out back into the tray. Yeah. The, we look in the cabin there, the high back buckets there, the bolster on the seats, the colour scheme there. Yeah. Uh, Trimmed in leather. Yeah, I yeah. Every, everywhere I look, everywhere <laughs> I look is fantastic. Now, speaking of the rack and pinion steering, Warren, you've done a nice job on that. Yes. Um, once again, when you put rack and pinion steering into a car or you change it, it's an interesting way to make it the way it would have been if it had been made in the factory. So we've redone the chassis rails where the steering box used to bolt on and we've taken all of those fixings out and made a whole new chassis rail on the left and right hand side, deleting the idler arm, deleting the steering box bracket so it's all smooth and custom and just like it would have been if it had been made that way. <laughs> Lovely talking to you, mate. Love you, Ute, and Thank uh, you. thanks for turning up. Thanks very much, Fletch. It's a pleasure. You're welcome, mate. Thank you. Making our way through, as we do here, Chrysler on the Murray for 2017. We haven't got an R model, Valiant, but we do have a very nice S. How you doing, Wayne? Yeah, good, thanks, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Good. Love the car. Thanks. They're all nice here today, just sitting in the paddock, aren't they? Yeah, it's pretty hot, though. It is a bit warm due to that, yeah, the bright heater up there in the sky. Yeah, it certainly is. Oh, well. Wayne, tell me, this car, special to you, you've had it a while. What can yeah. you tell us about it? Uh, it was a one-owner car when I bought it. It's been kept well. It's pretty original. Um, it's always been garage from you. Yep. Revolutionary car, though, weren't they? I mean, when they, when they came out back in the early 60s in 1962, I mean, the EK Holden was still running. Uh, a 138 cubic inch engine, we've got a 225 here, we had a lower hood line, we had torsion bar suspension, wow the list goes on, we had 14 inch wheels with the Valiant, the Holden was still running 13, I mean they had they had so many advantages didn't they? Yeah that's right, they were the first car to have an alternator as well, Right. all the others were still running generator. Yep. So, yeah. But all due respects to the general, nothing could catch the Holden in sales. No that's right. Yeah. And speaking of catching, one catching the other too, obviously the Valiant having a three-speed automatic transmission, locking it in second and taking it to near the red line was Holden's top speed. I mean, all this sort of stuff, you just you would never hear of that these days on, on the new car market. But back then, things were so revolutionary, weren't they? And there, were, there, were, there might have been one particular uh, make or model that would really outdo the other one. And it was, a, it was a real competition, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Chrysler was... Well, ahead of its time at the, at the time, I suppose, wasn't yeah. it, when they were released? released. But, uh, well, this shape was almost uh, looked upon as gimmicky. I mean, they were so far ahead of their time, I think it scared a lot of the uh, Australian public. I suppose it took a while for them to get used to it, but a lot of people like the cars now, even even the younger generation, you know, they just look at them and think, wow, well, they're, you know, sort of spaceship sort of thing or well, Batmobile or, you know, that well, sort of thing. Like we alluded to, back in 1962, it was uh, well, pretty well the most powerful vehicle on the road, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, and with with a few engine modifications and that sort of thing, carburation, yeah. they could do, you know, yeah. great speeds. Absolutely. So. Um, so what have you done to the car in the time that you've had it, Wayne? Look, not a lot, just basically maintained it. Um, brakes, a bit of suspension work, new tyres, that sort of thing, mm. but, you know, body-wise, it's... It's all original. Yeah, yeah. And 
incredible stuff, mate. Well, look, you know, you're uh, part of a, a long line of cars here, uh, part of the RNS, Cries of Valiant, Cobb of Victoria. Um, you guys uh, do a good job on the presentation, mate. We're turning up. Yeah, thanks. Um, we hope we'd have a few more here this year, but it's it's not a bad turn up. It's a feature for the RNS this year, so. Yeah. Oh, that's good. All right, Wayne, thank you very much, mate. Thanks, Fletch. You're welcome. Sure. I appreciate you bringing your car along. It's all right. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Just a taste of the 25th annual Chrysler's on the Murray for 2017. And you've seen it first on Classic Restos. If you can get to Albury in 2018, it will be well worth your while. In the meantime, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for what?